In the hugely anticipated third installment of the Uncharted series, Drake's Deception, oh, damn it. Nathan continues his quest for Sir Francis Drake's hidden treasure. Determined. Along the way, he and old pal Sully will find themselves deep in the desert in search of the legendary lost city of Rob Al Kalai. Thirsty. Aram of the Pillars. <sighs> of course. Where is it? I don't know, buddy. What are you trying to prove? I'm not trying to prove anything. Research. Some familiar faces, pretty ones at that, will help them. Ah. No cursed treasures? Nope. No diabolical warlords? No. You are the worst liar. What? And they'll have to deal with Marlowe. Think Helen Mirren on the blob. Ugh. Mr. Sullivan, I won't harm your precious boy. I merely want what's mine. The previous games have been cracking yarns. Every bit as good as the indie movies they're inspired by. Is this? Oh, yes. <laughs> There's some great Drake and Sully backstory, and their relationship, a key theme this time around, delivers some genuine emotion without ever feeling soft or gooey. On to gameplay, then. Now, not much has changed here. Perhaps a little harsh, but the campaign doesn't add anything truly new, except the storyline. Crap. Everything has been tweaked and enhanced, though, so the views are even more epic. Where the hell am I? The climbing feels smoother. And the switches between gameplay types, say from solitary puzzling into epic battling, occur more frequently. Some of the borders have now disappeared too, so combat and climbing have merged. The weapons feel very familiar, but melee has been noticeably improved. Drake is a lot smoother when executing takedowns, and there's some nice new animations and environment kills thrown in for added wow factor. Slow-mo, please. In terms of enemy AI, we found the larger grunt characters a little repetitive, but overall, we love the combat. And it's not just running, gunning, and fighting. New mechanics include horse riding. Drake seems to be at one with his steed until it's time to dismount onto a moving truck. Being able to shoot whilst riding is useful. <laughs> and Drake, don't forget the one-liners. Roadkill. Whew. Drake also seems to be spending a lot of time running away from spiders and after Marlowe's head goon. Where did he go? Add to all this drama and action, some classic puzzles, and you have one epic single player campaign. We loved every single minute and wanted the eight to ten hours never to end. Nice. Good job there's some additional co-op then. Up to three players can play together online or split screen. Co-op adventure gives additional story missions to play through. These expand on the main campaign. For example, here Nathan and Sully are trying to discover what's in these crates. These missions are challenging enough to make working as a team essential. Okay, let's see what we got. Which is good. You'll need to revive down teammates because you've got a set number of lives. You 
gonna... The second element of the game's co-op comes in the shape of arena levels. In these, you'll set a series of objectives. Our first goal in the Chateau map was to retrieve the treasure idol and return it to the chest. Twice. We then had to deal with a few waves of enemies in a horde round, and finally, kill a set number of enemies in this marked zone. Enjoyably challenging. Of course, there's competitive multiplayer too. Modes include traditional deathmatch, team deathmatch, and our favorite, the treasure humping hunter's mode. The subway level really impressed us. Battling on moving trains, awesome stuff. Don't leave without me, boys. So, verdict time on Uncharted 3. Well, the campaign is brilliant while it lasts. It's just a bit short. And we'd like to have seen more major new gameplay features, like the horse riding. The excellent co-op probably quadruples your playtime, and the multiplayer, though not for everyone, will be popular for at least 12 months. I'll take that, thank you. Proving once again a match for any Hollywood blockbuster, 9 out of 10. Finally, Drake's secret will be revealed.